Yep. All right. Um, I think so. I mean, this everybody's. So we're good with that, right? We're good, yep. All right, we will call to order the November 13th Board of Assessment Review meeting. Um, start with a call to order. Are we, uh, those present? Ms. Torrance? Here. Mr. Sanctus? Here. Mr. Chamberlain? Present. Mr. Herrick? Present. Mr. Parkinson? Here. All right, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so um, next item is minutes from prior meetings, but we don't have uh, the proper people here to do that, so we're going to skip by those and we'll do those on our own at, a, at another time. Which brings us to... Appeal to the board, C number 18-001. Um, we'll start with, that's the Walmart, and we will start with that first. Um, so the town gets to open on opening statements on that, um, then you'll follow with opening statements, and then we will move on to arguments from, the, arguments from there. Sound good? You might want to ask, um, according to these rules, um, the uh, folks to stand and no, get sworn in. Okay. The chair swears in the parties and the person who's going to give testimony. All right. So anybody that's going to give testimony, uh, do you, do, you have, do either of you have any witnesses besides yourselves? Just guess the assessor. Okay. All right. We'll swear you in then. Yeah. Not sure how to do that. <laughs> you say, do you tell the truth, the whole truth? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. We don't need to do it with the lawyers, correct? Just no. Uh, well, he's just giving argument. I mean, you're not really testifying. Right. Okay. If any luck, the lawyers won't be testifying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're good well, then. Oh, no, I'm standards sorry. Standards, procedures, and summaries. You can say that we're going to be following the uh, board procedures. All right. So, some of you may or may not have these, um, but we do have a copy. We do have some copies up here if need be. But we are going to be we've have clearly outlined procedures, um, rules and procedures and standards that we adhere to in all of these. Um, I think you've been around it enough to know how we usually handle these things, but if, if you do need it for some reason, we do have a copy here, okay, and we will, we will go by these as much as the lawyer keeps us in line to do that. <laughs> and the order of presentation. All right, and so yes, and so the order will be Town will open, the taxpayer will then get a chance to open, and then we'll move back to the town for arguments and witnesses. Um, then back to you for your arguments and witnesses, and then start cross-examination. Well, after they finish uh, with their witness, then the um, rules uh, talk about the taxpayer having the right to cross-examine okay. uh, the, the assessor, and then the board asks questions, and then when they make uh, their case, uh, there's a right to cross-examine. Of course, there's not anybody really to cross-examine. Um, and then the board asks questions of the um, taxpayer. <coughs> that makes sense to everybody? That's what the rules say. Yes. <laughs> now, whether they make sense is a whole other thing. Uh, in, in that, since the assessment is entitled to a presumption of validity, now, why does the assessor go first and become subject to especially cross-examination where it's the other side's burden to present the number and show that it's manifestly wrong? But the rules are what they are. We'll play by them, okay. just for the record. It's not exactly the way the law works, but there we go. That's good. That's the way we've always done it, and I don't have an answer for you. So <laughs> I'm not looking for one. We understand. It, we'll, uh, all right. All right, so just to recap that, um, 
the town will open will open with their statements. The taxpayer will then give their opening statements. The town will then uh, have their argument and witnesses, which at what time you can cross-examine. Then we'll ask some questions if we have any. Uh, moving on, you'll have your chance to argue. And if you had any witnesses, they could cross-examine you, and we will ask you questions at that time. And then we'll both close. You'll both get a chance to close, starting with the town. And then we'll move into to some deliberations. All right. Great. Okay, identify yourself for the record. Uh, David Buffard, uh, assessor. Uh, what I'd like to do is begin by explaining uh, the assessment of the Walmart property. Uh, so if you will go to exhibit number five that we provided. should be uh, at the top, it should be labeled valuation report. Mm -hmm. Everybody there? Jim, do you have another set of the... Uh, I only had the one set, but... That's all right. That one? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'll begin with uh, this is this report was produced by uh, the software program that we've been using called Trio. Uh, T R I O, uh, and uh, it's a software program that's based on the Marshall and Swift uh, cost service. If you're not familiar with that, it's a national or international service that produces uh, estimates on uh, replacing or building uh, commercial and residential properties. Um, the numbers are built into the system, um, so I can't be specific uh, as to uh, what exactly the numbers are for particular components and so on. Uh, they're, they're all built into the system and they're updated periodically uh, to keep up with the times. <coughs> um, and by zip code, if I'm correct, right? Is that mm -hmm. uh, by region. By region, yeah. Yep. And there are factors uh, that apply to the different regions um, to accommodate the different pricing of okay. different regions. Uh, what I'd like to begin with is the uh, land assessment. Um, the total acreage for this property is 26.38 acres. Um, typically with uh, commercial properties, we begin with a base lot, and the, the primary base lot is the first acre. But that can be much larger. In this case, uh, it's 12 acres, and the reason for that is uh, it was determined that 12 acres was necessary to accommodate the building and the site improvements, like the parking, the parking lot, and the uh, the base lot is uh, is priced at six hundred thousand per acre. That's for an improved um, base lot. This includes the site work, uh, such as the paving, etc., uh, public water and sewer, and so on. And then there's a, a decelerating value uh, for rear land, uh, the first five acres is at 15,000 an acre, the next uh, 10 acres is at 10,000 an acre, and then if there's any wasteland, that's at a minimal $200 an acre. So if you add it all up, uh, the total land assessment <coughs> for Walmart is $7 million. $322,544. Now, we, any questions on that? Uh, it's the same uh, price per unit schedule that we have for the property next door that contains uh, Bob's furniture, uh, discount furniture, and, and home goods, and Lowe's uh, 
Um, so pretty much uh, Gallery Boulevard uh, has the same same price. Uh, <clears throat> now we move on to the the building itself. Uh, the building is a retail, a large warehouse type retail store. Uh, and you can see how it's laid out there. There's a base cost. Uh, there's an adjustment for heating, cooling, uh, size factor. Uh, if you add those up, it gives you $65.47 per square foot times the square foot uh, total of the building. Uh, the retail portion and it gives you a replacement cost. Uh, this was uh, this was done quite a quite a while ago. It was, I believe, the the uh, the total assessment for Walmart has been pretty much the same since two thousand nine. So these numbers go back to 2009. Uh, this was the price schedule back then. And uh, back then, uh, it was considered 95% good uh, with very little uh, physical depreciation. For a total, uh, for, for the retail store, a total value of just over 11900000 the other section that you see there is, is called a distribution warehouse. That's basically the receiving area behind in the back of the store. Mm -hmm. um, and that, again, is, is priced uh, in the, using the same method, the same uh, procedure, if you will. And that gives a, <coughs> a total of one, just over 1.2 million. So the grand total for the buildings is $13,142,710. If you add the land of the buildings, uh, the grand total is $20,465,200. <coughs> and that's the uh, current assessment for Walmart. So that's basically it. Any questions? Kind of seems like we skipped the opening statement part and we're <coughs> right into the, the meat of it, but we're all good with that, right? Have or that's I mean, the, the question is how the how the valuation <coughs> was why the assessment is what it is that's how it was calculated <coughs> that's the card and, and it's been the same since 2009 if you take a look at see that's uh, exhibit number three so that uh, that assessment card shows that it's the same from 20 from uh, 2009 through 2017 and this case is about the value as a April 1, 2017. So that, that's how it was arrived at, using, as, as Mr. Buffard has explained, uh, using the TRIO software, which is based on Marshall and Swift numbers and, and their indices. That's, that's a pretty common um, this is pretty type much, of software to use for, yes. well, for this. Well, TRIO, there, there are a number of software camera systems that are used by assessors. Uh, we are in the process of converting over to another system called Vision. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but most assessors in Maine use either Vision or Trio. Mm -hmm. A couple of them use another one called Patriot, but they're all basically uh, operational-wise, they're basically the same, and I believe all of them are based on cost services like Marshall and Swift. Yeah. <coughs> Sam, I'm very familiar with Marshall and Swift. From yeah. <coughs> um, I mean, I, I would say it's 
before we get into too many questions, really, it's his turn to, to cross-examine before we, before we go there. So how is the base lot price per acre calculated? Uh, the values are arrived at by looking at the market. <clears throat> uh, obviously, there are not as many uh, sales of commercial properties as residential, uh, but we look at uh, commercial sales, and depending on where they are, uh, we if they're improved, we we can extract the land values by removing the the value, the cost, and depreciation, depreciated value of the buildings will give us uh, land values. Uh, so it's, it's sort of by abstraction, abstracting the building, the value of the buildings out of the total sale price will give us a resi residual value of the land. Now, does the software that you utilize, does it make adjustments for time and condition of the sales? Well, we don't. The software doesn't do the analysis. You know, we do that manually. Uh, we keep, uh, I do ratio studies. I keep track of sales. And uh, again, by simple math, abstracting, uh, costing the, the buildings out, using Marshall and Swift, <clears throat> I, can, I can abstract the building values to come up with a land value. Looking at the comparable type properties is uh, is how we come up with the land values, the base lot values. Um, do you, can you identify the under the underlying data for that six hundred thousand per acre? <clears throat> well, again, this was this was done back in two thousand nine. Uh, I was not here then. can't give you any specifics on that. Could you tell me how the market has changed from 2009 to present? The market's been going up. We went through um, went through a boom in the early 2000s, uh, and then the market dropped after 2006, and then picked up again, uh, I'm not sure, maybe 2012, 13. We have not done a reveal. Scarborough hasn't done a reveal of, of the commercial property since 2005. So um, the values have been, the assessments have been, have remained fairly consistent since that time. You said the software to calculate the value of the building for the utilizes the cost, correct? Yeah. It's uh, based on Marshall and Swift. It's based on Marshall and Swift. Uh, the company uh, Trio, which is now owned by Harris, <coughs> they may uh, they may tweak it here and there, depending on their preference or their own separate studies. Uh, so, so the numbers themselves, square foot unit costs, may vary slightly from Marshall and Swift, but it should be fairly consistent. It, um, when, you're pre when you're valuing commercial property, you rely strictly on the cost, or the cost approach? Uh, yeah, typically. Um, it's just the nature of, of the business. Um, Appraising commercial properties is a very long process, um, as any appraiser will tell you. Um, assessors depend primarily on the cost approach, um, and and it's it, it, 
comes down to uh, a question of time. It's very time consuming to appraise uh, commercial properties and when you're, when you're dealing with hundreds of commercial properties, there's, uh, the, the quickest way to do it is through the cost of Do you have any questions? Or? <coughs> Actually, I've got a couple of questions. Okay. Um, I, for, for the assessor, between 2009 and 2016, where things stayed kind of stagnant, uh, you'd mentioned that, um, <coughs> that, that things didn't really kind of get going until about 2012. Um, just kind of curious <coughs> why the, the assessed, did anything get reassessed lower? During that dip, no, the <clears throat> the assessments stay the same. Okay. Uh, like I said, the, the last time a reval was done was 2005. Mm -hmm. So the assessments stayed constant unless there were additions, uh, remodels, and that sort of thing. significant change to the property. Right. right. <clears throat> and it was it was built in 07. Am I correct? So the first assessment is based on when it was built. Or when they moved in there? Like, I think it was that? built in 2008. 2007, okay. 2008. That, that would make sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first assessment was built on, was was prepared for them putting this in there. Is that? That's, that's my understanding. If you look at uh, Exhibit 3 on the property card, yeah. page 2, it says that the uh, year built is 2009. Yeah. So whatever it be. It wasn't yeah. completed no, it until sense. March. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Right, in 2008, there's, uh, there was a $500,000 assessment on the building, probably because on April 1st, 2008, it was partially, they had started construction, so the assessor picked up that much value based on what was there. Yeah. <coughs> Any others? So, so I guess the question is, um, you, knowing that the market was obviously getting a little bit better uh, 2012, then it kind of took off. Um, the city didn't go back and reassess any additional value. You kept it the same up until, looks like, last year. Yeah, well, I didn't because I wasn't here, but yes, uh, to answer your question. The city. The, city. Uh, the value was, was uh, kept the same, uh, and it's <coughs> assessors don't go back where they shouldn't go back and reassess just one or two properties because it, it creates Imbalance. inequality among the other, you know, with that mm -hmm. property and, and all the other commercial properties. So if you, if the assessor had gone back and, and raised the value of this because the market was going up, just this property, it would have rendered this property over-assessed compared to all the other commercial properties. So when you do it, you do it as, as a class, not just individually. Makes sense. All right, so for basically nine years, you, you kept the valuation the same. It looks like the building actually went down a hair. The land stayed the same. Uh, what year? Uh, looks like in 2009 and 10. Where, you where had are we that, seeing this? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, record. Okay. Exhibit three. Exhibit three. Thank you. It, it looks like... <coughs> The, the land, the house, the building itself went down from thirteen million three twenty five one hundred down to thirteen million one four, and you stayed the same for the following eight years. Yes, uh, correct. <clears throat> and I, I can't tell you why it went down. Uh, was it about one hundred fifty thousand? Uh, maybe something was removed. Okay. No, no other questions. Related to that, I've got a question of uh, why did it go back up in 2018? To go uh, well, that would be this year. We just did a rebuild right. of all the commercial properties. Okay, so we've got that. Was there, in 2009, did you have any kind of, uh, for, for lack of a better way to say it, kind of an, a predictor, uh, uh, adjuster, meaning that you had some kind of you know, taking a look at things assumed 
what was what kind of development was going to go on and before you assess the com commercial property or did you kind of just keep it with what was exactly on the market then? That uh, was probably based on uh, running the numbers through the, system, through the uh, camera system uh, mm -hmm. to estimate the replacement cost. And that's 13 million. Anybody else from the board? Actually, I, I do have another sure. question. On, on the land, you had stated uh, with 26.38 total acres, you've got 12 acres that you assessed at $600,000 per acre. Uh, and then you've got roughly 14 acres after that that dwindle down to peanuts, for better lack of term. Mm -hmm. um, is, it, is it functionality for the 12 acres that it's 12 acres that really has some functional use and the remaining yes, 14 uh, is basically just... Um, 12 acres was determined, I'm, I'm assuming, again, uh, trying to speak for the previous, the prior assessor, but uh, this is this is typical, uh, typical procedure. Uh, 12 acres were determined to be the base lot required, how much land was required uh, to carry the building the site improvements, meaning uh, parking, and parking, et cetera. Exits. Right. And the rest was considered excess land, and there's also some wetland on the property. Mm -hmm. the, the, the excess land, and, and let me know if I'm stepping my bounds when I ask this, the excess land, is, is that land that could be developed in the future, or is that land that? Yeah, that, that land, uh, I guess if they wanted to expand the parking lot, they could use that excess land. And they, so potential, I guess for better lack of examples, like a mall side, you start to see little businesses popping up mall side in the parking lot. Well, I don't know if that could be done. I don't know if another business could build a, a building on this site, but they could expand their existing building or parking area uh, as long as they have the room. All right, so, so 12 acres is really what you feel they're utilizing 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can I just nope. ask about the excess land? Do you consider the developability of the excess land uh, to the extent it could be developable, or you no, that that's no, not no, a, a no, it's No, just, it's just that's a standard value per acre that we use for excess land. Right. A couple to add to that. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail because I kind of want to hear what I'm still not sure what your argument is yet, so I think that's going to bring up some other questions. But um, you have it was built. Well, you had talked something about 95% uh, with a 5% depreciation, and, and when you get into the depreciation, it's standard across. If you're looking at six different companies in Gallery Boulevard, they're all going to be very similar, correct, the way you're looking at that? Yeah, but again, um, you have to go back to 2009. That's that's when uh, it was fully assessed, and so was you. And yeah. um, I don't know of any assessor that always that will assess a property at exactly 100%. Mm -hmm. um, they try to keep it around 95%, okay. even for new construction. It's just to give that benefit of the doubt as the market goes up a little bit, um, because no one likes to have their property assessed for over 100%. That makes sense. Uh, so that's that's the reason when when uh, when assessors assess something new, they usually start at about 95%. So there's always a 5% depreciation uh, to account for that. And again, it it, it was not reassessed. During, from 2009 to 2017, so, so, so there was no adjustment to the depreciation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically, if, if, if we went and looked at something from any other store in Gallery Boulevard, it's it's going to look very similar. Five five percent depreciation yep. to whatever it's standard stuff. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. I actually have um, additional questions based on other evidence that was submitted by the town. All right, can, can we hold that for one minute? Just because it might pop something else up for you. Um,
Yeah, you've answered everything. Base is usually the first. You had said something earlier about the base is usually the first acre, but this one's 12. And I think I think you answered it, and I lost it somewhere in while I was making notes on if other this, stuff. If this was a, a shed mm -hmm. on this parcel, it would have a base lot. Anything with a building has a base lot. Mm -hmm. And the first acre, if it had just a shed, you would only need an acre. So that acre would be, uh, mm -hmm. that would be the base lot. Okay. And a Walmart is uh, what, like five acres just for the building, something mm -hmm. like that. Right. And then you get all the parking. So, so the base lot grows along with the improvements. Makes sense. And if you looked at Lowe's across the street, they're probably in a similar place right. as? I think Lowe's has a 10 acre. Base if you take a look, because it's slightly seven, smaller. If you look at Exhibit 17, that's mm -hmm. close. One thousand four hundred four. Oh. And I believe the one next door has a ten-acre base. <coughs> Fair enough. Uh, are we good on the board for now? To we'll let. Yeah. Yeah. You go back and do a little more cross-examining, and then you can just head right into your to your argument at that point. Right, uh, I'm turning to Exhibit 17 of the town's evidence. Um, that's for the lows, correct? That's my understanding. <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. so how many square feet is the um, <coughs> the lows location? The Lowe's, uh, <coughs> is that water still? Mm -hmm. um, oh. 138,000? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, 138,100, about um, three quarters of the way down on the page. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. <coughs> 138,000 square feet. Excuse me. And uh, your understanding of Marshall and, how familiar are you, are you with Marshall and Swift valuation? Mm -hmm. Pretty familiar. Okay. Um, <coughs> now, a larger building, does it cost more or less to construct per square foot? Uh, Based well, on Marshall well, Swift. If they're both the same quality and they have the same components, uh, a larger building would, would cost less per square foot. And the based on this valuation record number 17, the Lowe's was built in 2007? It looks like 2007, <coughs> right. And what's the um, base cost per square foot for the Lowe's? The base cost, uh, says here $37, is that what you're? Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, turning to the township's exhibit number five, the valuation report for Walmart. That was built in 2009, correct? Correct. <clears throat> two, just two years after the Lowe's was constructed? Right. And twice the, approximately twice the square footage? Uh, Not twice. 138 versus 191. 191. Rather, I apologize. <coughs> but what's the, um, why is the base cost for Walmart? Well, for one thing, Walmart has, uh, the food store, has, has a huge amount of coolers in there. Um, and I think Lowe's, Walmart actually is more like a, a uh, cost approach. Marshall and Swift. I think both of these are sort of warehouse retail, uh, but the Walmart is a higher grade than uh, Lowe's. Lowe's is more like a warehouse. Uh, and Lowe's, I think, is, uh, excuse me, Walmart is uh, a higher grade, higher quality building.
Yeah. All right. I have a question for the board. Um, I, I, I know it's time for the for the appellant to present the case. I don't mean to intrude. Oh. Um, we've been presented with two appraisals, one for Walmart, one for Sam's Club, um, but there's no appraisal. And it's very difficult to cross-examine the piece of paper. We had been advised by, I believe it was the board, that the appraiser was not going to be necessary to appear before the board. Well, let me speak to that. Um, I don't think that we've given any advisory opinions whether uh, a party needs to bring a witness or not. At least I have no recollection of, of that uh, being the case. And to the extent that someone may have said that at some someone in the town hall, they weren't speaking for the board when they did that. Uh, that said, the rules of evidence don't apply in these proceedings, and so uh, you're free to submit those documents, and the board can um, take them and um, afford the weight that they deem appropriate uh, to those documents. I, for the record, I'm objecting to those appraisals coming in. I can't cross-examine the person who wrote that report. I can't uh, explore <coughs> whether they're truthful, whether there are inaccuracies, whether there are issues. It, it would just read on its own face as though everything's fine. I, I object. Well, you're entitled to object, so the chair can rule on the objection. Duly noted. I think for now I'd leave him in, see where we go with it. <clears throat> you are up. So with respect to the Walmart property, Walmart has chosen to retain Newmark, Knight, and Frank to prepare appraisal reports. Uh, and in the report, as the assessor identified, act, uh, the square footage of the building. On page nine. Yes. Hold on, Tyler, if you just hold on a second. That just so I don't screw it up the later. Last name? Yeah. Zaburl. Zaburl. Can you spell it for me? I'm it's sorry. Z E B E R L. Thank you. I apologize in advance if I uh, say that correctly. No. I've dealt with it for about 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Page nine, uh, that's the executive summary prepared by um, NKM, or um, NKF rather, which summarizes the property's uh, square footage at 215,824 with uh, 26.38 acres of land. Um, and the appraiser engaged in the three approaches to value the cost approach, the income approach, and the sales comparison approach. And place the greatest weight on the sales comparison approach, which is a market approach to value um, by comparing uh, sales. Um, the appraisal included a value of $14 million for this property, which is approximately $6.4 million less than the assessed value. service was utilized by the appraiser to um, arrive at a value of the property. Uh, they took three land sales, uh, one in uh, Emscoff, one in, and two in Cumberland, Maine, um, and arrived at a price per square or per acre of 125000 and applied that value to the entire 26.38 um, acres of land, as opposed to the um, 
town's valuation of 600,000 for the first 12 acres, then the step down 15,000 an acre for five, and then 10,000 for 4.66, followed by the 200 uh, nominal per acre for 4.72, um, which is, uh, describes as wasteland. I'm sorry, what was the first one, the first sale? There was two in Cumberland and the first one was where? Uh, Penobscot. It was in Bangor. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. It's, yeah. That's Penobscot, Penobscot County. Penobscot County. County. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Which is not really okay. comparable. And the next two were in Scarborough and Cumberland County. Okay. Wrong, wrong line, I apologize. Um, that information can be found on page 42, the land sales adjustment group. And there were adjustments made, um, a 20% adjustment to the comparable sale number one for uh, Scarborough's superior uh, location. And they arrived at a value of 125,000 per acre, with a indicated value of rounded of 3.3 million. They um, the appraiser then utilized the cost approach, Marshall and Swift valuation for replacement cost new of the building, um, and applied a base cost <coughs> per square foot of 76.89. market value of land plus improvements of 22 million 124 uh, next they applied a de depreciation worksheet if you um, flip to page 47 is how they arrived at the depreciation. Um, they depreciate, um, also applied to external obsolescence and <coughs> and um, the cost approach can be um, <coughs> summary can be found, found <coughs> on page 50 with a depreciated Placement cost new of ten million seven hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and three, uh, rounded to ten million seven hundred and twenty thousand. To that value, they added back the land value of three point three million one hundred and twenty five thousand per acre, which is um, summarized on page fifty one at the bottom, arriving at an indicated market value of fourteen million dollars rounded. <coughs> The appraiser then utilized the sales comparison approach. They chose um, four sales, um, one of the former Shaw's, uh, Biddeford. So which page do you want? I'm on page uh, 54.
that sale occurred in October of 2017 for a total value of $3,900,000, <coughs> total sale price of $3,925,000. Um, the second sale was a former Kmart and Bagger, um, which occurred in uh, March of 2017 for a sale price of $5,250,000. The next was a former Bob's and Home Goods, uh, located in, in South Portland, uh, which occurred in June 2016 for a total sale price of $7,000,000. And the last was a former Home Depot, which is in, also in, which was in Bangor, uh, which occurred in January 2015 for a sale price of $3,550,000. <coughs> um, those, those sales are all summarized on page 59, the approved sales adjustment grid. To those sales, uh, the appraiser made adjustments for location and building quality for comparable one, uh, resulting in a total adjusted price of $70.22 per, uh, per square foot. Uh, comparable sale number two, made a total adjustment of, uh, for location, building size, age condition, economic characteristics, with a net adjustment of $15.14 per square foot, resulting in a $65.63 per square foot value. Comparable three, uh, there were adjustments made for location, building quality, and age condition, uh, condition totaling $4.06 per square foot, resulting in an adjusted price of $77.10. And the last sale, uh, there was an adjustment for location, access and exposure, and size, resulting and a net adjustment of $7.75 per square foot uh, with a total adjusted price of $38.77 per square foot. The appraiser concluded a indicated value of $65 per square foot. <coughs> and applying that value to the 215,824 square feet of this building, uh, he concluded an indicated market value of $14 million. Are we going to be asking questions along the way, or is he? Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about just letting him finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Let him get through it, and then uh, unless it's <coughs> unless it's something that you didn't hear it, or there's only one more approach to value. So. Okay. <laughs> if that's any relief, but the last approach to value utilized is the income capitalization approach. Um, so, the, from my understanding of the report, the appraiser um, did an analysis of market rents. Similar types of buildings, uh, he concluded that these would be best. Uh, I apologize, I don't know where mm -hmm. uh, I was going with that one. Uh, there, page 61 summarizes the market rent analysis. Uh, he, the appraiser um, utilized six different market um, rents from the market uh, the first in Brunswick, the second in Falmouth, the third in Topstrom. Fourth in Auburn, fifth in Bangor, and the sixth in South South Portland. <coughs> uh, the adjustment grid can be found on page sixty-five, which summarizes the term, the locations, and the terms of the leases, with an indicated market rent conclusion of seven dollars and fifty cents per square foot. In utilizing that seven dollars and fifty cents per square foot, he engaged in the income capitalization approach. Which can be is summarized on page
So um, the appraiser concluded uh, base rent of $1,618,680, uh, to which he applied 10% vacancy and collection loss, $161,000, <coughs> resulting in an effective gross income of $1.456 million, approximately. Less operating expenses, 3.5% uh, for management, and 25 cents per square foot for replacement reserves, uh, with total expenses totaling 104944 with a net operating income of $1,351,868. Uh, to that, he applied his uh, market drive cap rate. He utilized the band of investment technique, which can be found on page 68, and concluded a cap rate of 9.6649% with an indicated market value of $13,990,000 rounded. And he reckons on the following page, page 70, there's reconcilia his reconciliation page in which he concludes a market value of this property of 14 million. Essentially, our position is that the property is worth the appraised value that we have received from uh, Newmark, Knight, and Frank of $14 million as opposed to the town's um, assessment of $20,465,000. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll start one more end. Work. This? Like, you're no. probably okay. okay. You're okay. Um, Bangor, not Bangor, just for your information so you don't keep saying it. Um, Bangor is not comparable even with the adjustment that they made. Um, he made an adjustment of I think it was 15% 15 15%. for location yeah. and well, it was 20 in one place, it was 15 in another. Um, I've been doing real estate between here and there and it's significantly lower priced. I was buying multi family units and for what I could get here for 250 I could get there for 125 so it's a significant difference so that would be one of my first comments is that I don't think any of the Bangor comparisons are valid even with the adjustments that they have made so if I stayed with just the other properties which were South Portland or you know nearby I'm on page 59 <coughs> Um, if I stayed with just the other two properties, um, we have one in Biddeford <coughs> and one in South Portland. And in South Portland, he has a minus 5% for location, which would indicate to me the way this is going that that means it's a better location than Scarborough. So my understanding is it's a worse look. If it's a negative adjustment, you're they're making adjustments to bring the comparables equivalent to the... Right, right. So I, I'm familiar with doing adjustments okay. to properties. But mm -hmm. if you're adding a percentage, it's to bring it up from a lower value. If you're subtracting a percentage, it's to bring it down from a better value. So they're indicating here that South Portland is a better location than Scarborough. And I would argue that it's not. Uh, if anything, I would say they're <coughs> fairly comparable. So I disagreed with that particular adjustment. Um, size is size, you've got your square feet, although according to your records, we are undervaluing your square footage because we had 191,000 square feet and you had 215. So to the assessor, we should add another 24,440 square feet to, to match their own records of square footage. Um, then, um, so, if, so if I throw out Bangor and I question the 5% on, on South Portland, um, I end up with the more, higher than the 65, I end up closer to the $70 per square foot. Um, I didn't do that calculation, but I could, I could easily do it. But it's going to be around $70 per square foot, or the 77 is going to go, actually it's going to go up. Mm -hmm. So you could redo that calculation. <clears throat> Instead of minusing $4, um, you're going to minus less. So it'll go up. So, so I guess based on 
those few things that I'm familiar with, with Bangor and the square footage, et cetera, et cetera, and the adjustments that I do to, I do to properties now, um, I would say that the $65 that you used on this particular comparison to get to $14 million is understated. I would absolutely agree with that also. I'm looking at the comparables that are selected here and just doesn't, the numbers just don't make sense to me. Um, the former Bob's and Homes Good, Home Goods location at Clark's Pond absolutely is, is an inferior site to, to the current, the, the current the site for them, Gallery. or yeah. they would never have moved to that location. I can pretty much guarantee that. They're probably experiencing a lot more traffic where they are now compared to what they were before. And um, uh, so the, the negative adjustment just doesn't make sense there at all. Um, I would probably turn, say that there's about a 15% change in where, where they've landed right there to where they probably should be. Um, comparing Bangor properties to Scarborough is exactly, uh, you know, what, my, what was said already is, is absolutely correct. And I would even argue that the Biddeford location is another one that should have had a, an adjustment upward to, to meet Scarborough. Um, so that, those numbers just don't make sense to me. Yeah, I, I agree that I should have mentioned the Bitterford one because it's not as favorable a location no, as Scarborough. Okay. Um, so does anybody actually have any questions for him? Before we get into, I mean, we don't need to. Okay, we don't really want to deliver. Yeah, we don't want yeah. to deliberate at this point on anything. We just want to ask questions to, to I, help. Gauge oh no, I fully understand. I'd love to know. So I, you know, to the point of counsel on this side, I, without having the appraiser here to actually ask questions of, I'd love to know how they selected these properties, how they how they actually determined that these were the best properties to compare against, um, because I, I think there there are considerable other options in the state that might not have been, might have been purposely not taken into account um, from what I'm looking at. I, I can't comment as to I, Exactly. And, and so I totally support the, the council's um, concerns for not having an appraiser here that we could actually interview and ask questions of. Anybody else have any other questions? <coughs> no, I understood. Um, I have a couple. Although, you know what's great about going last is? <laughs> what? You, asked. you guys have already asked. You guys already asked half oh. the questions. It works out really well. Um, there was a spot in here, and you probably can't speak to this. Uh, he was looking at, in here, like a 22% depreciation rather than, I, I don't even know if it's really relevant, but how are they coming up with 22% depreciation versus what, you know, how, how does how does any of that work? As I understood the report, he engaged in an age life method of depreciation. We're speaking specifically to the cost approach. Uh, now I can't even remember. That was a while ago. So, it, yeah, that, that sounds like it probably was right. Chairman, I can answer that. Okay. Uh, okay. Age life method, uh, the the economic life, according to Marshall and Swift, for this building is 35 years. Okay. It's eight years old, so you divide eight by 35. Fair enough. But, but Chris, I have to point out that um, we wouldn't give full depreciation. Otherwise, at 35 years, the building would be worthless. It'd be zero. Yeah. It'd be zero, and we'd be appraising on zero, and then it could be reused, just like when they moved out and <coughs> Martins went in. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the building was quite old at that point, but it was still viable. It still mm -hmm. had useful life. So when you depreciate, uh, you wouldn't take the full depreciation of what the company puts on the books as the depreciation you would use for valuing. Makes sense. Correct. Okay. Plus, I, I believe that recently there have been some pretty substantial improvements to the Walmart in Scarborough. Uh, I, I do understand that there were some renovations. I'm not sure when the latest renovation was to this property. So perhaps the assessor may have 
information as the most recent renovation. I know this was constructed only in 2009. I believe there was some renovation work as late as 2015. <coughs> I believe there was renovation work as of the past year because I know I've been in that store enough times to know. <clears throat> yeah, to it, I mean, I don't know if we need an exact date, but the fact that it has I, been the last couple of years. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. The, so if you look at the property card for 500 Gallery Boulevard, which is what we're talking about here, and I'm looking at Exhibit 2, and not meaning to testify, but just draw attention to something that's in the record. Mm -hmm. um, there's a... There's a uh, description of something new on page, on the third page, it says new RTU or RTV 35, and the date is somewhere around 2013, so something may have been added at about that point. It's on the second page of the property card. Oh. Um, and so two other questions I have for you. Um, We didn't really do a true opening, so I think I, I'd like to hear you hear why. Why did they decide to ask for this abatement? Is it do, do they feel they're discriminated against? Is there is there something relevant on that side? And and why is it just happening coming up now? Why is that thought just coming up now, or was it something they thought about for the last several years? I can't speak as to what their prior uh, position was. I know at this stage, they believe their property is substantially overvalued based on the market whether it be through the cost approach, income approach, or the sales comparison approach. Okay. Um, and it's our position that the appraisal report does support a reduction. Uh, Based on the appraisal, right. Okay. <coughs> All right, so obviously there's no one really to cross on, uh, but if you'd like to cross him to an extent. Or at least, here, here's what I'd like to do and see if the board, this works with the board. I have a couple of questions for council just to make sure we know where we are in this. And then what I'd like to do is, is work with the assessor and just go through the appraisal. We both read it and we both have, you know, he has comments on it and I, I would only direct his attention to it. I'm not going to be testifying. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a, okay, board. Yeah, um, seems fine. Yeah. The, you okay the assessment, the assessment for the yes. property is twenty million four hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred dollars for, for April 1, 2017. The abatement application is for ten million four hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred, but the uh, but the value that's supported by the appraisal mm -hmm. is fourteen million. So is the amount of the abatement sought fourteen million now? Yes. Okay. Um, the land was purchased in the land for this was purchased in October two thousand five for three million nine hundred sixty seven thousand dollars, basically four million dollars. Uh, the appraisal has that value at three million three hundred thousand dollars. So, is the has the property lost seven hundred thousand dollars in value since two thousand five? Is that your argument? I can't speak to that. I'm, I understand two thousand five was part of the height of the market uh, prior to the collapse in two thousand eight. Okay, I didn't mean to be argumentative, but I'm just trying to understand the numbers. Um, okay, so let's let's open that report. And uh, David Buffard has reviewed it, and he's uh, he's prepared a, a well, he's, he's prepared to go through it, and we'll we'll talk about the issues that arise in. Um, <coughs> take a look at the summary on page 9, it's interesting that only Walmart is entitled to rely on this information and no one else. I don't know if the board can tonight, so just beware when you're reading this. Um, let's take a look at, go through the, the valuation piece on uh, starting at page 31, when we look at the improvements, uh, are there some additional improvements you're aware of on the Walmart property? There are food sales there. Do they have any <coughs> special equipment for that? Uh, yeah, they have coolers, uh, like most uh, food stores. Is there a garden center? <coughs> There's a garden center, yes. 
Live gasoline still in sales at this one? Or? No. No, okay. If we take a look at page 34 of the appraisal, there's a listing of tax comparables. And so you have a uh, per square foot, taxes per square foot calculation, uh, and an assessed value per square foot. So that Lowe's is at $81, and, and Sam's is at 20, 94, and Shaw's is at 138, and Martin's is at $81. And Walmart is shown to be 94, 82 on the basis of, of the town's valuation. If you were to plug in the value that, uh, the $14 million value, what would you get per square foot? David, you want to run your calculator? So it would be 14 million divided by the number of square feet. 215,824 is the square feet. Uh, $64.87. Okay, and the, the range otherwise is between 81 and 136 right. in that area? Okay. Hmm. Let's take a look at the, uh, the land valuation. I mean, page 39 is where our attention had been directed with the comparable land sales. Uh, David, you've done, some, you've, you've done some review yourself. What do you know about the Bangor site? Uh, the Bangor site was a more or less a back lot, a rear lot uh, with re use restrictions, and it needed a road to be built to provide access to that. And the estimate to build a road is 750000 What do you know about the, the Beacon at Gateway property that's proposed as a comparable land? That's uh, Comp 3? Yeah, Comp 2. Comp 2. Uh, well, it's farther away, and the use is different. It's, that's the one that's um, being developed now for um, apartments across from uh, Cabela's. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And what do we know about, uh, what, what do you know about the multi-tenant retail site at Gallery Boulevard? I assume that's the 700 Bull, uh, Gallery Boulevard site next door. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's directly next door to Walmart. Uh, it sold for $2.3 million. Um, however, it required about a million dollars worth of preloading. Do you know what that is? Uh, it's where they have to bring in Actually, they brought in trucks and trucks of sand, piled it up on the site in order to compress it so it, it could hold the building. And then they had to wait about a year for that to happen. And then they had to remove all that sand. So it took, it took at least a year to go through that process. And that process cost an additional million dollars. And so <clears throat> from the time they purchased this site, to the time that they were able to, to build on it and, and complete construction was probably two or three years, uh, which, you know, there, there are ways to figure that in, in terms of dollars, mm -hmm. how, much, how much money you lose by doing that, because someone had to be holding a mortgage or something on this in the meantime, paying, making payments on that. So there's, there was some value loss there which is the reason why it sold for $2.3 million and not two or three times that much. And how much of that 18 acres is buildable? Uh, that one, I think that's 10 acres. Boulevard. Uh, the base lot is 10 acres. It's a little smaller. Are you aware of any land sales that weren't mentioned here that might be worth considering? Uh, CarMax bought a lot uh, on, on the main wall road, uh, 5.7 acres, and paid $7 million. $7.7 50 Main Street in Westbrook was purchased. That's the old quarry for uh, what's, what's that? Pike. Pike, Pike. Uh, Pike Industries. Uh, 
We had a total of 82 acres, but 65 of it was usable. Uh, that sold for seven million dollars. Uh, and so these these sales are clearly. Do you know of any Walmart in, in a similar sold? in a similar? It's in the sim they're in a similar uh, market. They're in the greater Portland market as opposed to Bangor. Uh, so those those were better sales, but they weren't. Are you aware of any Walmarts that have sold? Uh, the Walmart in <coughs> Bangor and Springer, Springer Drive sold for $5 million, 21 acres. Uh, it was torn down. It was purchased by Lowe's, and Lowe's built a store on that site. So what? basically it was a land sale. What city? Bangor. Oh, in Bangor. Uh, was there one in Falmouth? Uh, mm -hmm. There was. I don't have that one listed. Walmart and Falmouth at 206 Route 1 sold in 2016 for $12 million. Uh, let's see. How many acres was that site? That was uh, roughly 13 acres. So there are other comparables out there. Would that be a fair statement? It is. And, and the land was grossly underestimated, land value. If we take a look at the cost approach, let's take a look at page 43. This is a calculation of replacement costs new. The category that was chosen is warehouse discount stores. That's under the Marshall Valuation Service uh, at the $65.94 unit cost. There's an adjustment for sprinklers. Should there be other adjustments? Well, to the Marshall and Swift uh, cost service, uh, we are in the extreme climate, so uh, there should have been an adjustment for heating, and that adjustment for this property should have been four dollars and sixty-two cents per square foot. In addition to that, uh, the appraiser, the appra the unit cost that the appraiser used was for a 12-foot building, 12-foot high building, and Walmart is 20 feet high. And there's a factor for that, 1.17. So if you add that all up, uh, instead of 76.89 as the square foot cost, it should have been around $96 a square foot. And that's right from the Marshall and Swift cost <coughs> service. Which is the same one you're using with. Yeah. This, this is right from just the, more the current one. For you're saying the 6594 should have changed? It should have been adjusted upward. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yeah. To 70 what? To, to 96. To 9604. 9604. Right. So, if I, so I ran the numbers using that instead of the 7689 and came up with a Replacement cost of twenty three million three hundred thousand. We're seventy six eighty. Oh, I see over here. Never mind. So there's quite a difference there. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I, I did not include external obsolescence. Uh, the appraiser uh, depreciated his cost by twenty four percent for external obsolescence, and he called it compressed rental rates, and I have no idea what that means. If you look at page 49, what it looks like is that the assessor took, the, the, excuse me, the appraiser calculated what Income would come in on the basis of market rents, and then use that with a cap uh, cap value or, or a capitalization rate of 9.66 percent, and then back calculated what the delta would be between that and the uh, market at the assessed value to come up with what we what was called almost six million dollars worth of external obsolescence. It's a back calculation. 
based upon assumed values. Let's take a look at the sales approach, page 54. Have you independently looked at these uh, these particular properties that are urged upon us as comparables? Yeah, I can run through them. Uh, Alfred Road, Biddeford, inferior location. It's an older building, uh, needed fix up. Uh, Comp 2, Hogan Road, Bangor, much inferior location, much older. <clears throat> this building was built in 1971, and it was in poor condition. Comp 3, Clark's Pond, uh, I call it similar market location. Uh, older building, but it needed fix up, which cost uh, six million dollars. Uh, comp four, Longview Drive in Bangor, uh, again much inferior location, older building, and that also needed renovations. Were there also any restrictions placed on it? Uh, yes. That was the one. Is that the one that was bought by? Lowe's. Sound BJ's. BJ's. Okay. Um, all right, let's go through the income. <coughs> I understand it was a direct capitalization process that was used here for the approach. And that's, so I understand you capitalized based upon market rents. Is that, is that right, Mr. Buffard? That's right. Okay. There's a list of market rents on page 61 of this appraisal, correct? That's correct. And there are six rentals, uh, not one of which is in Scarborough. Uh, the closest one is at the Jetport Plaza. But the rent he's using was as of 2013, so it's an older rent. Uh, only two of them are in the greater Portland area. So his, his indicated rent, which I believe is on page 65, is $7.50. Uh, in his narrative on page 24, he lists rentals, rental properties, including Mallside Plaza at $14 to $18 a square foot, Mall Plaza, $16 to $18 a square foot, Jetport Plaza from $10 to $23 a square foot, and Marshalls directly next door leases their space for $13 And how do we know that? How do we know that uh, about the, the market rents next door? Because this same appraiser used, used that property in, in an appraisal he did challenging the Lowe's property in Auburn. The, uh, I have here a, a, an appraisal that was done by IRR, which is the predecessor of New, Newmark Knight Frank. It's the same as. Uh, Appraisal firm, and uh, if you look at page 44, I, we can make this an exhibit. I just wasn't sure if we didn't object to the entry of that. It wasn't previously provided. That was his. This was to be provided on cross examination, but we weren't allowed to cross examine an appraiser. So, you know, it, the point that's being raised this is argument, not testimony. The point that's being raised is the market rent that was used as the basis is about seven, it is about. Uh, $7.50 per square foot. The same appraiser, same appraisal firm, shows market rents right next door of $14. The same appraisal report at page 24, which you already have before you, talks about market rents at $14 to $18 per square foot. The appraiser chose not to use them. So, Chairman, I think you need to rule on whether the other appraisal comes in. The objection has been made by the attorney for Walmart that this wasn't previously provided, therefore should not come in. I think Mr. Katsafika's position is I'm entitled 
present some new pieces of evidence in the rebuttal phase of the, of the hearing. So, I think, I think in years, in other, in other cases, we have, have we allowed that or not allowed that? I would say we, there's been some we have. We've been pretty open about allowing things to come in and, uh, and leaving it to the board to decide the um, credibility, the reliability, uh, and assigning the proper weight to it. Well, we could even use page 24 in the same document um, that's already been presented by Walmart. This is just added, but it is the same appraiser. Uh, you can I, take that in between position, keep the, keep the new appraisal out and talk about page 24. I'm sorry, say that again. Um, I think what you're suggesting is that the document it, stays It's in out. the document from Walmart on page 24. They state the 18 or 14 to 18 dollars per square foot. So we don't need the additional document to substantiate that. We can use the documents that Walmart gave us, and therefore it's not, it won't cause any conflict. Okay, so yeah, no, let's go with that. So, yeah, yeah so we okay. won't use the, the new report. Uh, the point is taken on page 24 14 to 18 dollar rents. So, the, part of the capitalization is using a market rent, and part of it is using a capitalization rate, correct? In the cap rate, the capitalization rate that was used by this appraiser is, that, is what what number? Well, he he started with nine nine point five percent cap rate, and then through some configuration, came up with nine point six six four nine. So when you take a look, there's a table of cap capitalization rates on page sixty seven, drawn from comparable sales. There's a range. What does that range look like? It looks pretty low. And it looks below? Below 9. Uh, below, below 8. Below 8. I mean, yes. Just to read the numbers, 7.75, 6.55, 6.47, 6.58, 8, 6.1, 6.9, 6.9, 6 6.10. The average is 7.28. It's a mean on that page, correct? Correct. Okay, but there's one that's 10.4 percent. Do you what do you know about that particular? That that was part of a um, sale. Tanger uh, sold sold off five properties, and um, were several of them grouped together? Yes, including Kittery, which is used as comparable for this. So this is an allocation? Yeah. And in fact... Do you say there should be an asterisk there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Although I'll let the assessor say that. But you could call that an outlier, right? I mean, if you're going to average it out... Yeah. Would you suggest that's the one you throw away? That's the one you throw away. Yeah, if you throw away the highest one, you should also throw away the lowest one to right. get the correct mm -hmm. mean. Yeah, okay. and your average is still going to be 7 point something. Mm -hmm. um, but he works it up to 9.6649, um, and based on my conversations with commercial, reputable com commercial appraiser, the typical cap rate right now is about 8. Which, so if you use eight and you change his net operating income, uh, it would make a big difference in the total value. Mr. Papard, you had a, a summary put together for this, and it's probably an appropriate time to go through that, if that's the board's wish. Well, uh, would you like to, to hear that summary? And it, it's pretty much gone through, but... Yeah, it's pretty much what we just discussed. In, in, in essence, a closing <coughs> argument, so to speak. Is that what you're thinking? Right. Well, the, the bottom line is uh, everything he used from land sales to, um, uh, to cost to improved sales to income 
rentals, etc., <coughs> were all much inferior to the subject. So when you do that, you're uh, you're reducing the value, artificially reducing the value. That would be like uh, a residential appraiser appraising a two million dollar oceanfront house and using three hundred thousand dollar homes as comparables. Uh, it just wouldn't work. So I think. Uh, I think he, I can't speak for him, but uh, it seems like they had a target that they were aiming for and, and they massaged the numbers to get there. Any other closing statements you'd like to make before we move back to? No, I mean, the, the, burden, the burden is on the part of the taxpayer to show that this is manifestly wrong. Uh, there may, uh, you, you can bring up issues with regard to methodology, but that alone doesn't get you anywhere. You have to show that the number is, is absolutely wrong. Uh, and here we have uh, an appraisal that cherry picks the worst numbers uh, that, that does not, uh, is not a fair and objective analysis of the value, but for all the reasons that uh, Mr. Buffard has gone through, it is, it's just off the mark. And so whether you're looking at it under cost, whether you're looking at it under income, whether you're looking at it under uh, comparable sales, uh, these look at different properties in different communities, few in, port, few in, the, in the main mall market, uh, drawing conclusions that, that don't make sense here. Looking at properties that have use restrictions, properties that don't have refrigeration properties, that don't have garden centers, properties that uh, are not comparables. Yeah, one of his, one of his major adjustments is for economic obsolescence, uh, which doesn't exist here. Mm -hmm. Walmart is in the prime uh, retail location in Maine just one mile from the main mall. Uh, if this store had economic obsolescence, they all would. Uh, you know, it just doesn't exist here. All right, you have the, you have the floor for your, your uh, closing arguments. Okay, uh, we, would, we would rest on the appraisal report provided by NK, uh, Newmark Knight and Frank. We believe that the analysis in the report is proper under USPAP, the Uniform Center of the um, Professional Appraisal Practice, and the concluded market value of $14 million. We believe that the assessed value of $20,465,000 is manifest. So I think at this point we would go to uh, deliberations within the, the board, um, and that's, again, typically not a time where we, we may have a question for you at some point, uh, just for clarification, not for argument purposes, but and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a discussion between us while, the, you know, while it's still on record and everybody can hear us. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I might, I uh, just yeah. wanted to highlight um, the standards of, uh, for the board, um, because uh, there are some board members and it, it's never a bad thing to just go over this again. Yes. So I did give out copies, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have one already, if you could just turn to page 4D and it says standards of review and versions of proof for the property tax appeal, uh, tax, tax appeal hearings. Everybody with me, and I'll, go, I'll be, I'll kind of go through this, but I think sure. it's important that we're all mm -hmm. at the same, um, uh, page the first paragraph talks about the Constitution requiring taxation being based on just value, and that taxpayers are equally bear the proportionate shares of the tax burden. Uh, just value is the same as market value. Um, market value is the price that a willing buyer would uh, reasonably play a willing seller in an open market, free from unusual circumstances, and where the property has reasonable exposure. 
Uh, point two, uh, <coughs> assessors have considerable uh, discretion and leeway in their choice of methods or combination of methods, methods uh, they choose to rely on to arrive at an estimate of the property's value. Uh, assessors must, however, uh, at least consider the appropriate uh, professionally accepted assessment and appraisal methodologies <coughs> to arrive at their fair market value. Then it talks about the three approaches, which you're probably all familiar with, uh, the sales approach, market approach, income ap approach, uh, cost approach. Um, paragraph three, assessments, assessing methodologies, and assessors' judgments are uh, presumed valid. To overcome these presumptions, uh, the taxpayer must prove that the assessment is manifestly wrong. And that's the term that you see come up over and over again in these assessment cases. So to prove that it's manifestly wrong, a taxpayer has the burden of proof, uh, meaning that they um, have to tip the scales um, in their favor, um, not just tip them uh, by honestly evidence that the amount to show that's manifestly wrong. That then oh, we're going on to page five of six. We only got one more page after this. Uh, that the judgment uh, of the assessor was so irrational or so unreasonable in light of the circumstances that the property was substantially overvalued and an injustice uh, resulted, or that there was a discrimination, this is not a discrimination case, or uh, that the dis assessment was fraudulent or dishonest. Um, so moving down to paragraph four there, um, to prove it's manifestly wrong, uh, the, the taxpayer must uh, show uh, two things, and you notice that there's some of the words are uh, in bold there. A, uh, provide <coughs> evidence that the board accepts as sufficient and credible. Uh, and that's one of the important things you do is you judge the credibility of, of the evidence that's presented to you. And it's helpful when, you, when you're deliberating for you to talk about what you found credible and not credible. Um, and, and that is uh, something that is then, if the, if the case went to court or to the next level, uh, would be given some uh, deference based on your uh, determination of the of the testimony in front of you. A, that the uh, board uh, accepts as sufficient and credible um, evidence which impeaches the validity of the assessment. So the taxpayer must provide credible evidence which impeaches the validity of this assessment and, that's the second part, provide evidence and proof that the board accepts as sufficient and credible, again, of the word credible, of the disputed properties of uh, fair market value. So they've got to provide both of these burdens uh, to engage uh, in an independent determination of fair market value uh, for the purposes of granting uh, an abatement. So paragraph five is a very long um, um, a, a paragraph about uh, discrimination cases, and, and that doesn't apply here. We have had uh, some discrimination claims, and they are um, uh, different than what you're looking at. Um, Paragraph six on the, uh, the last page, six of six, where an assessment represents a fair and a just, a just determination of that, uh, value, the taxpayer is not entitled to an abatement, even if they are to just demonstrate a potential flaw in the assessor's methodology. If the uh, property is assessed at its true or just value, the valuation is consistent with similarly situated properties, uh, the taxpayer uh, has not incurred harm from the assessment. Um, that is properly remedied from an abatement. So you look at um, the, the sort of the entirety of the situation, including other uh, other properties. Uh, the total value of the parcel, land, buildings, improvements is the controlling value of the property. Uh, as a result, demonstration that the component of the value has been overassessed is insufficient legal grounds to approve overvaluation. A property owner must uh, prove overvaluation of the total value to receive a and uh, abatement. And um, the last part is about mass uh, appraisal technology, uh, um, um, <coughs> te uh, techniques, and that is something that is often you see more in residential uh, contexts. Um, but that, um, the assessor uses certain techniques rather than getting a, his own appraisal every time. He uses some general techniques. I just wanted to be, uh, make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, question to that. In a case like this, if, if the board so chose, there could be, in other 
in other abatement requests, there's been, or hearings, there's been brought up about partial abatement. Yes, that's an excellent question. So it, your task, and I'm hoping each of you will weigh in uh, as, uh, as often as possible and as thoroughly as possible, as possible with your views, uh, but the options are to um, confirm the assessment of uh, the, uh, and deny the abatement uh, and, and, and back up the assessor's uh, assessment. That would be one option. Another one would be to grant the abatement as requested. And uh, yet a third option would be to come up with some sort of in-between place. Uh, if you do that, uh, which is possible, uh, I would urge you to uh, give me some uh, reasons or talk about your reasons and how you got there, uh, as opposed to just saying, well, it seems like half is fair or one third or 60 percent, 70 percent. Um, try to put some meat on the bones if you can, if that's where you're inclined to go. Um, and then um, we can assist in um, taking your thoughts and, uh, and, and ideas and, and writing them down in, into findings if, if we're requested to do so, which you probably need to consider at your next meeting. It might be hard to do that tonight, depending on how this plays out. Um, so for the sake of deliberations, um, we're going to come up, we'll go down the line, mm -hmm. okay, with some thoughts and whatnot, and, and then kind of to what Derwood's saying here is at, at the end of it, we'll have a, a general consensus of thoughts, and then he's going to mm -hmm. take those thoughts and put them into a, a more proper document <coughs> for us to decide on at a later time. And, and at that point, we could come back and say, no, you know what, you missed what we were saying on this, or, or yet, you're right on, on all these different points, and at that point, we would vote on it. Okay. Yes, that's a little of the process we've employed in the past. It's, it's important to have a, a thorough uh, decision in these cases. And if I write something up, I, I do expect for you to um, um, look at it carefully and, and then tear it up to some extent. And we say, have made some changes in the yeah, past that yeah. if maybe, you know, sometimes it's, it's just wording or sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's whole things, but um, <clears throat> for the most part, Derwood hits it right on the knob for us. I'm just so listening to what you're saying. That's pretty much what I'm okay. trying to do. So we'll, we'll start this way and work down and then, and then come back to me if that. that's fine with everybody. Sure. Okay. First, I'd like to clarify that the, the application originally asked um, the abatement requested real estate valuation at ten million four sixty five two hundred, but it's really they're asking for an abatement of six million four sixty five two hundred because it is at twenty million, and they want it to go to fourteen million. So I want to clarify with you that what you're asking for is six million four six five two hundred. Yes, it's in the original value, uh, value estimate. It's um, just an estimate based on our understanding of the market. Of ten million. Uh, the appraised value came in at fourteen. That would be. Okay, so so I just wanted to clarify that first, that what you're asking for is six million four six five two hundred. Um, I first want to say that I didn't find all the um, comparables credible, um, as was pointed out with my first comment that Bangor isn't a comparable area, and then to further. Um, go with what the assessor told us about other properties that were in the closer to Scarborough, Portland, um, this area that would have been better comparables. So I didn't find the, that the comparables were credible. And if you took out the, the ones that didn't meet the bill, and then you referred to page 24 with the rates, you would have gotten a um, much closer to what our appraisal is. And I didn't do all the calculations. So I, I can't tell you what the exact number would have been, but if I, but if I take out those other um, areas, you know, so I basically just don't find it credible that they came up with these numbers um, to kept getting to 14 million in three different methodologies using flawed data. So I, um, I do not support the abatement. I would. I would support the, appraise, the appraiser's um, current value. The assessors. The assessors. I'm sorry. The assessors' current value. Uh, one of the concerns I have is I'm seeing where the land was originally purchased for just under four million dollars, 
the city had it assessed for just under three million dollars, um, and with the improvements, they're now up to just over seven million dollars. Yet the the appraiser is still calling for a value of around three million dollars. Uh, basically, the value less than the value of the raw land, which um, now that that entire area has been developed, um, it has certainly gone up exponentially. Um, the value of the building, it's, it's really tough to value a 200,000 square foot shell of a building that isn't a fancy office building class A, nor is it just a hardcore warehouse. Um, am I familiar with it? Yeah, unfortunately it goes up three times a week, <laughs> uh, so I'm familiar with it. Um, looking at the appraisal, tearing apart an appraisal, which I like to do on a regular basis because that's the business I'm in, uh, I would have a real hard time with the adjustments for locations. Um, Bangor seems pretty far out. Uh, I won't be the dead horse because it, it's already been brought up, but um, I think there are probably better sales closer to. Uh, certainly, I was not aware of the South Portland uh, Carmack sale, and, and that is a great land sale. Um, Biddeford uh, is definitely a little below where Scarborough is. Uh, I know there was the, the, uh, the, I think it was the Shaw sale. Um, though right next to the interstate, which is a prime location, uh, I've been in the building and I, and I know it's, um, it's got issues. I, you know, all this is leading to, I, I, I have a I have a hard time appreciating where the appraiser came in with his opinion, and that's, at the end of the day, all this is is his opinion. Um, I, I can't support the $14 million number either. So, my turn. so um, I have to agree with Marjorie, Marjorie and Matthew. I, I, um, I can't support this. I. I I feel that the taxpayer has failed to meet the threshold of proof. Um, the, if, it, it, do you have any other evidence other than these appraisals? I know. Okay. So relying on one single appraisal to establish that, uh, or, or to rely on that as sufficient and credible enough to support what you're asking for is, is just doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, you know, I see the credentials for a certified general uh, appraiser, but I would think that they would know better to take the closest in proximity, closest in age, um, use, market, like-kind property. And what I see is kind of a deliberate omission of similar properties. And that concerns me because I don't know whether the appraiser is lacking competency or lacking ethics. But either way, I don't believe that there's been sufficient and credible proof that backs up uh, why we should have an adjustment in value of any kind. I, the, the amount of adjustment is irrelevant because the data is so poor and so weak and the supports for it is so poor and so weak. And that's my opinion. All right, and last but not least. <clears throat> um, so not to echo everything, but uh, to a certain amount, that's what I'm doing. Uh, as I go down through the standards of review and the burdens of proof for the property tax appeal hearing, and I look at, at number two, as the assessor and consider, uh, assessors have considerable discretion and leeway, so on and so forth, and I, and I start looking at uh, the beginning of his argument of how he came up with these numbers and used them you know, within the area. Um, I, I definitely feel like you used a standard across all, not you, but different assessors through time. I feel like the, those assessors have used that same standard for all of uh, commercial properties in Scarborough. And you've continued that up so that you've kept that um, very much the same. You, you're not, 
using one method for this building here and then coming over and using a whole different method of, of how you're coming up with these numbers on the other t side of town or so, so, so on and so forth. Um, so for me on number two, it's, it's hard, for, hard for me to go away from that when your, your numbers have relevance. They, they, there's, there's me to them. Um, number three goes back to number two. It's hard for me to say that his, uh, his appraisal is manifestly wrong if he's coming across the same way with all of them, right? I, I have trouble with that. Um, going down to number four, looking at <clears throat> Newmark Knight, uh, Knight Frank's uh, work here. Some of them had uh, ages that don't really compare. Some of the, the comparables, that the ages don't work. Uh, in others, it's a location that doesn't work. In some, it's just the type of store might be completely different. Um, so for me, I, I'm not really taking anything from this. I'm not really seeing where this uh, valuation and valuation and advisory is working for. the board, I'd recommend at this point um, that uh, you could um, take a straw vote uh, as to whether you um, agree um, whether an abatement should be granted but not a binding vote, um, and as opposed to taking the actual vote and then doing the findings afterwards, I, I, I think it's problematic to sort of back into the reasons, sort of have the reasons in front and then take your official vote. Uh, I think I have an idea where you're coming from. I, I've taken notes of what you're uh, was saying. Um, so maybe there is no need for a straw vote because um, everybody seems to be um, pretty clear on, on what they're saying. Do you have a need for a straw vote where, where I don't think you'll be flying back up uh, in, two weeks from now whenever he's able to put these together and then we go and take that actual vote? Yes, that, that's fine with us. It's fine with you. And so we'll just get you those results from there? <coughs> Okay. Thank you. And do you feel the need for a straw vote at this time, or uh, I would no, take I, that into consideration if you did? I think I understand. Okay. Right, thank you. Okay. okay. So, so I think I have what I need to, to move forward. So. Okay. All right. So uh, we can maybe take a break. Tell six ish, yeah. right around six, and then we'll we'll start in on the on the second grouping and bring freshen up whatnot. Call their wives, so on and right. so forth. Husbands. Cool. All right, we will recess until 6 p.m. Thank you.
right, we're back on. So we are back in session. Uh, we're going to start Deerwood. Like uh, just, this is just a, a follow-up on the last hearing about the Walmart. Um, there was a, a, a bit of discussion about whether the appraiser uh, for the uh, property owner actually had to show up in person. And it's, it's come to my attention that there was a call uh, from the law firm uh, to the town about whether the uh, appraiser had actually had to be here. And the chairman, who's not here, uh, Mr. Peoples, apparently, uh, said it was okay for the appraiser not to um, not to show up tonight uh, if that's how they wanted to proceed uh, with the understanding that the um, appraisal itself would come into evidence. Um, that's a little different than the way we had discussed it before, which was uh, that we weren't aware of such a request. And I think it's only fair to uh, put on the record that uh, a request was made, it was granted. Um, obviously, there's a certain... Um, Disadvantage by not having the witness here, and everybody understands that. Um, but um, th I just wanted to clear up. The, in fact, there was a, an effort made to contact the town about that particular question. So, did I say that right? Yes. Now? Thank okay. you for clarifying. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. So I think we'll we'll run this one similar to the last one, but um, let's quick opening statement, and then if you guys have. Um, anything you want to add to that? Uh, first of all, uh, Jim Katz, Pekas Law Firm, Perkins Thompson here for the assessor for the town of Scarborough. Uh, we're here, this matter, this is what I should have done the first time. We're here on this matter to, to talk about an abatement request filed by Sam's Club uh, seeking an abatement of the town's assessment of $13,208,000. Uh, the original application for abatement was $6,208,000. Eight hundred dollars for value. The value that's proposed by the appraisal that they have submitted is eight million four hundred thousand dollars. In a minute, the assessor will tell you how that eight million four hundred, uh, how the thirteen million two hundred eight thousand eight hundred dollar assessment was calculated. But to try to save a little bit of time, we've taken two hours getting here. Um, I think it, it's a fair statement that if you were to take a look at the two appraisals. Uh, Walmart and Sam's Club, if you were to substitute Sam's Club for Walmart and Sam's numbers for Walmart's numbers, all the comps, all the land use sales, all of the capitalization rates, all of the market rents, all of the other texts, same in the Sam's Club appraisal as it is in the Walmart appraisal. We could go through the exercise of asking about all of those. Uh, with the council and I have spoken, uh, what we're agreeable to is to say that we would accept all of the statements made about the appraisal from the prior proceeding into this one yes. as part of the record so that we don't have to go through and talk about each page of the appraisal as we did before from either side. We're adopting everything that was said about those as part of this proceeding. Yes, uh, we would ask that this appraisal be considered as well, um, mm -hmm. but as uh, uh, counsel for the township has indicated, it is, we would be amenable to adopting the prior comments to the appraisal for the Walmart property. Right. Sounds wonderful to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so with that, I would turn this over then to Mr. Buffard to talk about how he arrived at the assessment for this property. Okay, this would be, uh, I'm Dave Buffard, the assessor. Uh, this would be exhibit number 12 for Sam's Real Estate Business Trust. This is based on the valuation report. Uh, it's set up the same as uh, Walmart. Um, the property contains 13.72 uh, acres, 10 of which is considered the base lot. The base lot is determined by the size of the building and the improvements, like the, like the parking area, uh, to determine how much area is required uh, for that property to, uh, to do business. So the first 10 acres uh, is assessed at 600000 per acre for a total of $6 million, and the remaining 3.72 acres is considered rear land. And that's assessed at 15,000 per acre, uh, giving us a total land 
value of $6,055,800. Uh, the improvements consist of a large building, uh, which is considered a distribution warehouse. Uh, it's a retail distribution warehouse. The base cost, uh, of course, this was done uh, some years ago, uh, as we discussed with the Walmart issue. Uh, the last reveal completed by uh, Scarborough was in 2005, so these numbers have been consistent for a number of years now. Uh, when this was done, uh, the base cost was $35.92 per square foot. And on top of that, there were factors and additional costs for heating and cooling, uh, size factor, et cetera, uh, giving us an adjusted cost of $52.44 per square foot for a total replacement cost of $7,170.60. Uh, this was depreciated down to 94% uh, with a subtotal of uh, just over $6.7 million. The service garage is where they sell and change tires, uh, which has a, square f a total square f footage of 3,000 square feet, uh, was assessed was cost at $37.52 plus the size and heating factors uh, added on to that, uh, giving us an adjusted cost per square foot of $53.10, uh, producing a replacement cost of $159,300. That was depreciated to 95%, uh, giving us a subtotal of just over 151,000. So the grand total of the improvements uh, is 6,891,742. Adding the land and buildings gives us a grand total of $13,208,800. So that is the summation of the Sims, Sims Club property. One, one. Quick point, was this, this building was built in? This was built, the original building was built in 1990 and remodeled in 2008. And I'm assuming that Exhibit 10, the property card. Yeah, if you look at the property card for Sam's Club, the, uh, the building estimate jumped in 2008. That would have been the result of the renovations. And uh, it went up slightly in 2010, which is probably another minor renovation, and it's been consistent <laughs> since then. How do the gas pumps play into that? <clears throat> uh, we, assess, we assess the gas pumps as personal property. Uh, the canopy is, is mm -hmm. fond here. slightly different. Uh, we have it at 140,046 uh, square feet, whereas the town has it at 139,700. Very nominal difference um, with 13.72 acres of land. Um, it's, it's a uh, big box retail store, uh, the Sam's Club. We would uh, rely on this appraisal report, which does have much of the same information, uh, same comparables, uh, same rental rates, same cap rates as the prior Walmart appeal. So we would uh, rest on the 
Okay. All right, so um, obviously there's no cross-examination in there. There's no, man, I don't even know if you really need to have a closing argument per se. I think your opening and closing are kind of the same. Yeah, just ask them if they have anything else they want to say. Okay. Is there anything in your summary that you prepared that you want to say that headline different than the uh, in, in my summary, the my comments uh, regarding the, the three approaches are pretty similar to uh, those of Walmart. Okay. Uh, they use the same sales, the same rentals, the same comps. From beginning to end, so uh, so my comments on those would be the same as with Walmart. Okay. From a from a legal perspective, we simply conclude and, and argue that the uh, the appellant has failed to failed to to overcome the presumption of validity of the assessment. Has failed to show that it's uh, that the assessment is manifestly wrong. That the uh, the assessment the appraisal does not support that. Okay. All right. Uh, I was just. I'd uh, just like to add that uh, our appraiser's conclusion of value is $8.4 million on this one. And just one um, note on page 24, the uh, rental rates between 14 and 18 per square foot refer to inline tenants as opposed to uh, big box anchors. That's, that's, I have nothing further to add. All right, so... Um, um, I find the same information lacking that I found during the Walmart review that the comparables are not um, well flushed out so that they meet what is really comparable for this area and so therefore I don't find that they've met their, their uh, requirements for abatement. I certainly find that the city has been able to produce information necessary to justify their position um, and the appraisal <coughs> is lacking the necessary information to justify their position. Um, being that I'm familiar with both stores and, and others around them, um, looking at the two the, the data that's been presented, it looks like the evaluation has been consistent, um, and I don't believe that the property owner has actually met their their burden of proof to establish otherwise. So, I uh, I don't see any reason to continue that abatement. Yeah. So I would I would uh, go back to. Um, we can't put in a ditto there, so that's not really relevant. <laughs> no. Um, but but I, I'd go back to the to the same things that I brought up with the with the first one. Um, in uh, that I, I, the one difference would be that this building is a little older, so I think maybe they would, if we really dug into the numbers, might be a little more relevance there um, in the, the new appraisal. But still, I, I I'd, I'd go back to I I don't feel that. There was anything manifestly wrong with your appraisal? Um, that the way you went about the, the city has went about getting that, um, you know, the, the way the tax card reads, the way it, it's it's all the same. You've been doing it the same way over and over again for all of the different um, companies in the area and within the city. So you're, and and if I read that again, wherever it is, um, that is, that's a big part of uh, our standards under number two, so that's important. Um, certainly no harm has come from these, that would be number six. Um, and concluding with, there's, the, the burden of proof is on the taxpayer, and, and I don't feel that, that the taxpayer met that burden of proof to to prove to us um, that uh, that any money is due back to them, whether partial or full. 
And once again, Durwood will take these and, and write it up. Yeah, I think I, I have those down. Uh, may I, I add one thing to your comment about the age of the, build, the building sure. being? Um, I just want to point out that the Walmart valuation report had the price per square footage at 60, 60 per square foot per cost, and the Sam's Club is at 35.92, and I think that that variation, that difference in valuation, actually reflects the age and okay. appropriately. Great point. Thank you. Okay, so what you want to talk about is um, with Tracy is dates. Uh, dates to get back. All right. So yeah, so we do need to come back as a board. Um, to go through his find the, the findings and, and the paperwork that he writes up for us uh, to make corrections or edits to that. And then at that time, we'll vote on them, uh, both of them. Mm -hmm. We'll also start going through some minutes at that point in time. We'll be able to get this, these minutes. We'll uh, try to get Alan here to get old minutes where you guys can't vote on old minutes. Uh, we can vote on these minutes, so to speak. Kind of clean up some different things. It should be a, a relatively shorter meeting. and. Um, <laughs> So I'll send this to you uh, several days in advance of whatever date you pick, um, and or I'll, I'll send it to Tracy, and then Tracy will send it out to you. One thing I'd ask is that you not deliberate or, or send emails <coughs> back and forth uh, to one another about uh, your thoughts, one way or the other, um, because the law is clear that when you're doing that, you're in essence having like a cyber meeting over a virtual meeting, and then all the meetings have, under the open meeting law have to be open. Uh, and uh, and open to the public. And so just hold your comments and uh, come in and we can, we can fix them up at the time. We have uh, the 26th or the 27th open, Monday or Tuesday, any time at all. Um, it works on my end. I, I cannot do the 26th. Do the 26th. <coughs> I, can you do the 27th? I'm pretty sure I can. Can you do the 27th? I can, I can do the 27th. Can you do the 20, What time? We can, any time. It can be in the afternoon. It can be in the evening. That I week I can be first thing in the morning. <laughs> I can do it uh, during, like, after 4. I can. Yeah, I'd have to I be, can do any time afternoon. I'd have to be closer to, to 5 at the okay. earliest. But, uh, that, that so you want to be 5 on the 27th? Week. You're talking on the... Five on the twenty seventh. Does that work? Sure. Oh. Five uh, five p.m. on the twenty seventh. Oh. Of November. 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 Of November. Uh, I thought I heard you. It's no. November. Okay. No. <laughs> We're gonna celebrate the holidays. I'll still be in that. <laughs> five p.m. on the twenty seventh. I can. That works for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay. Me, I will book it tomorrow. Hold on. Let me. Hold on. Just triple check that. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so 5 p.m. on Tuesday, the 27th of November. <laughs> okay. Tracy, are these broadcasted live? Or is no, it? this is only taped. Just, uh, the other ones were. It's available on Netflix. Right. Yeah, the, <laughs> other one, the other ones were. Yeah, I think it was on Prime, so. Oh, sorry, you know. So, um, so we said 5, right? Yep, 5 p.m. on the 27th. Well, I'm sure. I don't want to We're only on tape, we're not live. Oh, okay. The other ones were live at the request oh, really? of the appellants, yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Motion to adjourn. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, motion to adjourn. Second. No, I will oh, need the motion. motion. You have the motion. Oh, I have the motion. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> all right. All right. We all in favor? 